What is up my desolate drivers, it's Chris with Tabletops and Tentacles, and this is Die Alone, a solo RPG podcast. So first of all, thank you for listening to the first episode if you were here for it, and to everybody that's joined our Facebook group or gone over to our Patreon, I appreciate that. And for the record, I think I've fixed the Facebook group now so that you can actually post in it, and it's not just me posting all alone in the solo Facebook group, so that's handy. Although thematically accurate, it is going to be a little better community now that everybody can post in that group. Uh, So for the first episode, I talked about how I was going to play Long Haul 1983, in which you play a truck driver in 1983, uh, trying to get somewhere in a world where all of the people have disappeared and there's a threat looming overhead or below ground or wherever you want it to be depending on how the story goes and I really had an interesting time with this game I enjoyed it Um, so with Long Haul 1983 all you use are some fate dice and a deck of cards and I used my uh, Wicked Kingdom cards from Wiley Beckert which are beautiful cards they're all hand painted and just really cool looking and I think that they I've really been looking at these RPGs as a bit of a meditative thing for me. They're not just enjoyment, but they're also a way to kind of get over some mental blocks or be creative or get my brain going in a different direction than it was headed originally. And one thing that I've found to be pretty thematic with this is to cue up some music. In this particular case, Long Haul 1983 actually has a soundtrack that you can listen to that's a mix of ambient noises and music and tracks that are directly related to incidences in the game. But I also, you know, I dimmed the lights and made a coffee and sat out in my studio with a selected deck of cards that I thought was sort of thematic for it. So I... I'm really getting into these. I figure if I'm going to do a podcast about it anyway, I should I should invest in the full experience for these games. And with this one, it was really interesting. Each day, you roll the dice to get your truck to start, and sometimes it doesn't start right away. And then you draw three cards that you lay face down. And you can do more if you want to as well. And each each of those cards when you turn it over the suits on it relate to a different part of your current struggle as far as things are concerned either it's a either it's a body a mind a rig or a road card and then each of the different uh, faces on it have different things that happen like if you roll a three of clubs intense weather conditions cause you to drift off the road you describe your panic and make a rig roll and a rig roll involves you rolling what fate dice you currently have active and seeing if you succeed if you do succeed you continue on to the next card if you don't succeed you lose one of your fate dice and that's a really neat technique because it does ramp up your tension as these start to get further along on your journey Um, the fate dice if you haven't used them before they have a Uh, like a blank square, a negative, and a positive. And depending on what you roll, they come out to a negative or positive result. And in my particular case, I didn't have any fate dice. So I took a couple of old Yahtzee dice and made them into fate dice with a Sharpie, which is fairly easy to do. And they include directions for doing so in the back of Long Haul 1983, which was handy because I'd never used fate dice before. Uh, So the neat thing about this is there's a couple of ways you can kind of go about it. You can dive right in and just basically start rolling dice and come up with ideas on the fly. Or you can sit for a minute and kind of knowing what the game's about, create a little bit of a backstory beforehand. And I played it both ways. I... The first time through, I just went in blind. I didn't really read anything ahead. I literally just turned the pages and started reading. And I enjoyed the experience. I definitely found that there were certain things about it that from my own mental state, I wasn't prepared for in terms of 
in terms of the actual mechanics of the game. So in Long Haul 1983, not only do you turn over these cards and experience events, but then at the end of each day on the road, you make a call to somebody and they ask you to actually record your voice making a phone call. And it's the 1980s, so you're of course you're standing at a payphone somewhere on a desolate road with no people around, no vehicles going by because you're the only person out there. And that was an interestingly effective way for me to feel isolated and strange. But I do, I do feel like that for my first game, I had a little bit of a struggle getting into the rhythm of that. And I think that that's something I will probably get better at as I continue to play these solo RPGs. It's not despite the fact that I'm sitting here alone talking to myself right now, it's a different experience when you're sort of role-playing solo and recording something. And I found it a, a challenge at times to not try and sit down and edit myself ahead of time and to just dive in and let it flow. And that's one of the things with this that they, they tell you to do with your first phone call. So you're in the cab of an agent semi-truck and it has a uh, some different things that you can pick, whether you have a well-groomed soul patch or a cheap gold chain. You're utterly alone. There's still power, hot water, megastore aisles are still lit, gas pumps are functional. And one thing I thought was interesting about that is gas pumps are functional and in my brain, I immediately went to using a credit card at the pump, but in 1983 that didn't exist, so my character was throwing money on cash register counters for a while, which I thought was sort of an interesting thing. Uh, setting this in the 80s is a nice touch as far as that's concerned, because you... There are certain rules that are different, there's no cell phones, the the radio and the internet and TV is all completely different and it I think it helps increase the feeling of isolation when you're playing this if you can really picture yourself in that era. You sort of establish who you are and where you are headed. Whether there's someone alone and scared you're trying to reach, someone who owes you, someone who doesn't like to be kept waiting, and it really lets you adjust the type of game that you're going to play, whether you're headed to somebody that you're in trouble if you don't get there for, or somebody that might need your help. And then you hit the road. And it has a really interesting vibe depending on how you decide you want to play the game. I kind of feel like I went into it a little more realistic from my first game, and as it went, things got a little more supernatural. And I think for my second game, where I more fully embraced that, things were a little smoother as far as how the game worked. Uh, this is based off of the Wretched and Alone system, and that one's, uh, an, well, we'll talk a little more about it at the end of the podcast here, but it's a astronaut in space with an alien, basically. And this has some touches of that, but it's a lot more travel focused. Um, you travel through different environments and you list them in what order and each time you hit a spade you transfer into the next location in your travels. And so you go through like ice and snow and wind and fog. And that was a really cool little element to it because it really, especially as a driver in those conditions, it really changes how you perceive what your day is going to be like. You have a completely different day when you're driving a big rig in the wind than you do when you're driving it in a dust storm or snow. You also have a wound that is somewhere on your body that could presumably get worse depending on how the game progresses. And there's something that is pursuing you, threatening to destroy you. And all of this lets you sort of develop it itself as you're playing the game, or you can sit down ahead of time and really crank it out. And I'm not sure I know which version I like better. I think it feels more cohesive if you plot a lot of that out ahead of time, but it also starts to feel a little more artificial. Whereas the first game I played where I just dove in and 
experienced each one as it happened, it really did change my perception of the game and kind of forced me to be creative about how I did this. And I did a couple of nights in game each evening. So I didn't sit down and play an entire game in one sitting. And I do think that that changes the play session as well, because for my second one, I did do that. I sat down and I played a full game in one session and I planned things out a little more ahead of time. And I embraced the supernatural and the, the horror element of it a little more. And it's a very different experience. And I think that both of them definitely have their benefits. Um, so they have you dive into your first call before you hit the road. And what they have you talk about is you finished your job, you talk about what you were hauling and how the drive went, you don't know what to say, so you describe your weather, uh, you don't understand what happened to everyone, you're making a guess, you're sharing a plan about how you plan to get to them, you talk about your mind or your wound or the reliability of the vehicle, and then you say goodbye and it's time to hit the road. So there's a lot of interesting experiences as you're playing this game that translate into the threat increasing or your vehicle not working as well or your wound getting worse. And I had a really good time playing this game. It's nice in its simplicity as far as how the game is laid out. It's really smooth. It's It looks really nice. It has fairly minimal graphic design. There's a few pictures of the character sheet that you're using and a couple of nicely atmospheric photography shots in here. The whole thing's done in a really nice black, white, and yellow. And honestly, this is one of those where I wish I'd had the official printed version of this. Um, I was using my iPad initially for my copy of it that I have on PDF. And eventually I was like, nah, screw this, I'm gonna print it out. Because the way it's laid out each day, you sort of flip through a couple of pages and then you check your cards against things. And it was kind of, I mean, maybe it's just cause I'm a total nerd about being thematic, but it felt more thematic to have a bunch of photocopied pages in a binder that I was flipping through than it did to have a fancy iPad. It's 1983, we don't have iPads. <laughs> so I, I'll be curious to see if future games that don't take place in a vintage time frame will affect me in that respect. I'm a total nerd for that. Like, I legitimately wished I could have found an old payphone to stand at and record my thing each night. And I probably would have gone there if there was one, but I don't think there's any active payphones in Idaho anymore. And I couldn't find anybody that had an old phone. If anybody knows someone with an old phone they're getting rid of, I'd love one. I think that'd be fun. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so this was a fun game. Long Haul 1983 is very recommended. Um, I'm not sure if it's still on sale, but I will talk to him. Um, he put it on sale for the week when we launched the podcast so that people could get it for half off. But it's really reasonable anyway. It's only like $10, and I think it's absolutely worth picking up, especially if you are a fan of like that 80s aesthetic. Uh, the It has a Spotify soundtrack that you can play while you're listening to it and it really does improve the atmosphere and the mood of the game. I really liked it. I had a lot of fun with it, especially if you go into it with a little bit of a supernatural horror bend to it. This game really plays smoothly and I had a great time. So next week, I am going to be playing The Wretched because it's sort of it's sort of the, the mothership of what a lot of people are using for the Wretched and Alone system. And it's I I have the physical copy of it. I backed it on Kickstarter for the third printing that they did. Um, Chris Bissett created something really cool and simplistic here, and I'm really interested in playing it. I've had this for a while now, and I figured, you know, I'm gonna be playing a lot of different games. I might as well get this out of the way, <laughs> so to speak. Um, 
I also just got a Jenga Tower 2, and that was one thing. I started playing The Wretched right after I got it, and sort of... I, I, there's just something about analog versus digital when it comes to something like a Jenga tower that I felt like the physicality of the actual tower, building the tension, knocking the blocks out, would change the feeling and perception of playing the game so much that I decided not to continue playing it. And so I decided I'd hold off and I just got a Jenga tower the other day. It's a really cool one I bought from some crazy dude on Facebook Marketplace that was selling all of his Monopoly games, and I happened to notice he had one that was like this nice looking stained Thai pine Jenga tower. So I picked it up for like five bucks, and I have a Jenga tower now. So I am going to play the Wretched, and I'm going to be stuck in space. So this is what the Wretched is about, in case you didn't know. You are the last surviving crew member of the intergalactic salvage ship, The Wretched. Adrift between stars after an engine failure, your ship was attacked by a hostile alien life form. The crew were dead. You thought you had won. You launched the creature out of an airlock and that should have meant safety. It didn't. The Wretched is a solo journaling RPG played with a deck of cards, a tumbling block tower, and a microphone. So this one's going to be an interesting, fun one. Once again, I'll be recording my my experiences in more of a Captain's Log style thing. Uh, this is very Ellen Ripley, alien inspired. It, I think it even has a quote from her at one point in it. And I'm really excited about giving this a try. I am very much a sci-fi horror fan anyway. And I thought if I'm going to be playing a bunch of Wretched and Alone engine-based games, we should play the mother of them first. So that's going to be our next game we play next week on Die Alone. <laughs> uh, so as always, if you would like to support the channel, you can go to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash deeply dapper. That not only supports the podcast and all of the other little weird things we do, but you'll also get little extra characters from some of our RPGs and you get our magazine Tabletops and Tentacles when it comes out each time in digital form and print on demand code through drive through RPG. You can also go to our Die Alone Facebook group that we have. We've got about 20 members now, and I'm really hoping to build it into something kind of focused on just solo RPGs, solo games, but also just, you know, talking about fun, nerdy stuff. I have a couple of other Facebook groups that are like that, and I thought the idea of one that's really focused more on solo play and not just game, uh, board games would be really cool. So we're gonna dive into that. I have a couple of other fun RPGs coming up as well. But you can get the wretched on lootheroom.co.uk, I believe is how it's said in there. And that can get you the physical copy, but the digital copies are also on itch.io and drive through RPG. And you can just type in the wretched RPG and it brings all of that up. I hope you're enjoying this. If you have any suggestions for something I should play, if you have any cool like solo hacks for larger non-solo RPGs or anything like that that I should try out, let me know. Uh, you can send an email to tabletopsandtentacles at gmail.com. And especially if you're a creator, an indie maker that would like your game showcased here, let me know about that as well. I definitely want to talk about more solo games. I want to spread the, the, the enjoyment of them a little bit more. And I think I'll probably start talking a little about other solo stuff that I've done on each episode as well. Like I just got in the H.H. Holmes uh, Murder Castle board game uh, for us to review for the magazine and it has a solo mode. So I'm going to check it out and hopefully talk about it on the next episode of Die Alone. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. And remember, we all die alone.